battle, let's go! Welcome to Reviews FC. Today we have the Predator 20 Plus going against the Predator 20.1. They have to go through four categories to decide which one belongs in your bag. But if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you never miss out on our next review. Or if you want to kick with us some more fellows than any of those guys, and we can kick it there. Without further ado, my name's Edder, and let's kick off with the video. <laughs> For the first category, we're going to take a close look and see how they square up. Let's get going. Alright, they're both really cool looking boots. Now, there are a couple differences in their designs. Obviously, the main one is the laces. Now, there are two more differences and it comes to the rubber spikes. When it comes to the Predator 20 Plus, it goes all the way almost to the heel. I don't know if you can see it. And on the other side, it also goes almost all the way, maybe like halfway, but it still goes pretty pretty far and it has a lot more spikes whereas the 20.1 only has all the way like it doesn't even go maybe midway of the adidas logo and then also back here and that's one of the main differences between the spikes another difference that you can it's it's hard to tell but i'll, I'll try to give you guys a little a little show so the rubber spikes on this guy are more diamond shape and more like they spike straight up whereas these guys end up having the spikes facing forward so it gives more of a scale feel to it and a direction I think because it gives you a little bit more of that predator vibe it's gonna get this point so this one goes for predator 20 plus it almost makes you feel like you're putting on an alligator paw or like a dinosaur paw. So I think for that reason, it, it the point belongs to the Predator 20 Plus. But I mean, the Predator 20.1 isn't really that far behind. It's it's it gives you a really cool look to it, and it gives you that Predator vibe they're trying to get. So I think for this one, it, it will go to the Predator 20 Plus. But I think a the 20.1 does a really good job of conveying the predator vibe to it too let me know in the comments below if you think this is the perfect mixture of a classic and predator vibe to a boot or if you like the all out i have turned into an alligator vibe to a boot ah! category number two we're going to take a look at features and for predator 20 plus it's clocking in at 275 dollars Feature number one is the rubber spike element, which uh, in their website and other websites, they're, they're saying it's 406 rubber spikes. They, they have the split outsole plate, texture, reaction studs, prime knit upper, and laceless sock feel. They're weighing in at 481 grams or 1.06 pounds. When we look at the Predator 20.1, it's clocking in at $225. They also have rubber spikes elements, but I, I had to count it myself because I couldn't find it on other websites. I counted 260 rubber spikes. They also have the split outsole plate, the textured reaction studs, primate upper, and they went with the lace closure. So they have the laces on top. They're weighing in at 461 grams or 1.02 pounds. Now, I think I'm gonna give it to the Predator 20.1. Is $50 really worth a hundred and so rubber spikes uh, I mean I don't see it so I'm not gonna give it to it I'm gonna give it to Predator 20.1 I'm getting hungry
Category number three, the reviews, we end up actually having a tie. Let me try that again. <laughs> There's a couple pictures in all of the reviews where they show how the rubber spikes just fall off after a couple games or after, you know, not that not too long of having them. So it's an issue with both of the shoes because they use the same kind of rubber spikes, obviously. Now, some, some reviews where they start to like separate themselves is the Predator 20 Plus ends up having issues with the actual fabric of the collar and the top of it. There were a couple pictures in the reviews where, you know, from a couple tackles or, you know, just, just cleats flying around everywhere, you could end up having them step on you or, you know, hitting you on the side. And because it has more fabric, the, I mean, it's in, in a way it's good because you don't actually end up getting that cleat straight on, but it ends up ruining your, your cleat pretty much. I mean, it's, eventually it's going to just keep stretching that hole until it's gone and it's, you know, $275. So it's kind of, it's something to think about. Whereas in this one, some of the issues they had specifically for this one was the stitching. Uh, there were a couple of them talking about the stitching on the back heel and also the back heel ends up feeling a little bit loose. I think they're both really cool looking boots, but they both have their own issues, obviously. So it's more or less like how you want to spend yours. You know, $50 more for this one and, you know, playing three games, it catches a hole or it catches a cleat and it rips. And then, you know, it, you never know where it goes. And this one, you know, it could start, like the stitching could start coming off. But I mean, is it usable? Maybe, I don't know. It all depends on how far the stitching is and yeah. So, I mean, you also would get, catch the cleat straight on instead of the cloth. So, it's something to think about both of these, but I think for the most part, they're tied, so I'm gonna give it to both of them. If you guys don't subscribe now, you'll never see this cute little face again. Come on, she's sad, she's tired. Please subscribe, guys. <gasps> All right, category number four is the try on test. Let's get to it. First, we're gonna start with the Predators 20 Plus. Now we're gonna try on the Predator 20.1. Honestly, I felt a little bit more comfortable with the Predator 20.1 after tying it from the back, just because it feels like it molds to your feet. Whereas this one, it feels like, like where the heel is, it's a little bit compressed and restricting, but then um, the tip is a little bit, or the toe area is a little bit loose. So it gives you like a, I don't know, just a little bit of unbalance feel to it. So uh, I think for this one, I'm gonna go with the Predator 20.1. Check out the links in the description below so you can get yourself a pair or just to see what the sale price is right now. All right, all in all, we start off with Predators 20 plus winning the design category. And then we have the Predator 20.1 winning the features. We ended up having a tie in reviews. And then we ended up getting the last point to Predator 20.1 in try on test. Now, if you haven't decided if you want to get the plus or the 20.1, I think you should look into the Predator 20.1 for three reasons. One, they give you options. You can either go high top or low top. And number two, they end up being a lot cheaper. It's really not worth it to get the Predator 20 plus. If you end up, if you do like it just more and you're just obsessed with it, then yeah, it makes sense. But for $50 more, it doesn't really give you that much. So the Predator 20.1 is really well priced and it brings you a lot of features. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video to let your friends know that today, these were the big no-nos and these were the big yes-yes. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fuck